In today's video, I'm going to show you the capacity tester that I'm using for testing 2170 lithium ion cells. This is the capacity tester. It's a charger and a dummy load in one box. It can do a 10 amp charge and a 40 amp discharge. This is the fixture I made for holding 2170s. And I have an old netbook running the software to interface with the capacity tester. The battery tester has some buttons on the front so that you can start a charge or discharge uh, from the front of the machine, but the real value is in the software that comes with it. So here I'm going to click connect at the bottom and the display on the charger changes to show that it's connected to a PC. Here I can start a 10 amp constant current charge to 4 volts. I can hit stop and do a discharge. We'll try 40 amps, hit start. This charger was about $300, and for the functionality you get, it's pretty incredible. This is the fixture that I built on my Shapeoko CNC machine to hold 2170 cells. There weren't a lot of options on the market, uh, so I ended up building my own, and because we're pulling such high current I wanted something that wasn't going to melt or heat up the battery ends, so I'm using 10 gauge stranded wire. All the strands of wire should provide hundreds of contact points over a large surface area, so it should be a really low resistance connection. And the aluminum extrusion helps wick heat away so that we don't overheat the ends of the cell. I could also use high current pogo pins, but it seems like that would concentrate the heat over a smaller area. I'll post a link in the description below where you can download my file for building this battery holder. The tester uses separate leads for current and voltage sense, so you don't have to worry about voltage drop in the cables. I just completed a 20 amp discharge of the cell, and if we switch to the thermal camera, you can see that the cell ends are nice and cool because of the low contact resistance and the aluminum heat sinks. This is the original battery holder that I bought and switch into the thermal camera, you can see that the ends are getting real hot and heat in these areas could rupture the cell. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the difference. Previously I was showing you how to run a single test from the PC software and now I'll show you how to set up a recipe to run a cycle test. So click on settings and here we're going to do a constant charge at 5 amps to 3.4 volts and we'll do the voltage cutoff at 4 amps and click add. So that's our first line in the recipe. For step 2 we'll do a constant current discharge at 5 amps down to 3.35 volts. Add it and now we'll do a cycle so it'll do a loop and we'll say do this three times. And so that's our recipe, and we can click start and watch it run. So for my next test, I'm doing a 5 amp charge, 10 amp discharge, a 5 minute wait for cool down, a 5 amp charge, a 20 amp discharge, a five minute wait, and then just top the cells off for storage. So here we're charging, discharging, waiting, charging again, discharging. The test completed and our results are on the top right. So on step two we discharged 5.1 amp hours. On step four we charged 5.1 amp hours. And on step 5, we discharged 5.1 amp hours, so it's very consistent. The energy column shows how many watt hours the cell discharged, and that's typically more important than amp hours, especially for electric vehicles. The software also lets you graph voltage and current as a function of capacity rather than time. This makes it easier to compare fast discharge rates with slow discharge rates. Back on the PC, we can save the data into a CSV file, and I'll show you what that looks like. 
we have our capacity shown in amp hours and energy shown in watt hours and voltage and current readings for every two seconds during the test. There are a few variants of this battery checker. Uh, some as cheap as $120 for the lower current versions. Uh, if you're any kind of battery geek, I think it's a totally worthwhile investment. Uh, I can see it being used for discharging USB batteries or any kind of batteries really. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you found this video informative. Thanks. As a side note, I haven't been paid for this review and I haven't been given any discounts. I purchased this with my own money and I just thought it would be nice to share some information because there hasn't been a lot of information out there on this product. The EBC models do charging and discharging. The EBD models are only discharge. Thanks again for watching.